Fields of Faith, can we just give it up for this crowd of people that came out tonight? I was thinking and praying about this before uh, coming here today, and I was just like, man, it's so cool to see these many people get together in one space, but, but you know what's even better? These many people coming together under the name of God, amen? Amen, and so I'm excited, and I hope you are excited and elated and ready to see and expectant to see what God is going to do tonight, because I don't believe this is going to be some ordinary, basic, original night where you just show up, hear worship, hear a couple prayers, hear a talk, and then go back home. But I believe there's going to be lives changed before the end of this. I believe God's going to do something amazing in your life. And so I hope you guys are drawn to the Spirit of God in the way that we're ready to give it to you guys tonight. Amen? So, yes, guys, before we uh, get started and do introductions, I felt like the Spirit of God was leading me to read a verse tonight. Matthew 11, 28 through 29. And I was praying, I was like, God, what, what would you want me to speak on, right? There's going to be, who knows, maybe 800 to 1,000 people here tonight. Lord, what would you want me to talk about? And I felt like the Spirit of God in this season called me to speak on peace. Can you guys say peace? And I'm not talking about a piece of chicken. I'm talking about the peace of God. Amen? And I believe God gave me this verse. He said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Can you say rest? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And he said, then you will find rest for your souls. What a beautiful God we have that desires to give us rest. And in a time of uh, chaos, pandemonium, we look in our lives, but we look out and scope out and we see that the world seems to be in turmoil, we're seeing wars. Can I encourage you guys that the church is called to bring peace? And God wants you to have inner peace in your heart, amen? Amen, so I wanna go ahead and introduce two awesome men of God, fathers, leaders, husbands, and um, I'm just blessed to be able to serve alongside them, and I'm excited to see what God is going to do through them. And first, we wanna welcome Coach Joey Rivera of GISD, he's the athletic director, guys, can we give it up? for him. And next I'm gonna go ahead and welcome the pastor Jesse Elizondo to Rivers Bible Church. He's the pastor there and he's the president of the Ministerial Alliance. Good evening uh, and welcome to 2023 Fields of Faith here in Gonzales, Texas at Apache Stadium. Uh, I would first off like to thank uh, the Gonzales Ministry Alliance for working so hard uh, for putting this together. Thank you to Dr. A and Gonzalez ISD uh, for allowing this event to take place. And thank you for all the GISD employees who helped in preparing the facility today uh, for use and all the volunteers that are here today uh, that are assisting. Uh, we plan on tonight's e event to be beautiful and soul filling. Uh, just had a few words. Uh, you know, Pastor Jesse gave me a whole four hours to get prepared for this today. So uh, uh, I, I try to throw something together real quick. Uh, and so I was able to come up with a few uh, the, of those cliche sports uh, terms when it comes to teams. Uh, you, we've all heard them. There's no I in team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Team stands for together. Everyone achieves more. Chains are only as strong as their weakest link. Many of us are more capable than some of us, but none of us is as capable as all of us. As cliche as these quotes may be, they ring true. Every single person here is better with the team that holds you accountable, that is there to push you through the tough times and praise you through the good times. Being a part of a team teaches you many important qualities of life. Teamwork enables better problem solving, communication, relationship skills, improved decision making, increased leadership skills. It brings the camaraderie of a group together. Being a part of a team allows you to put yourself to the side and allows you to see the success of the bigger picture. Being part of a team always uh, allows you to learn what it means to truly give yourself up to something bigger. Some of you may be on a sports team uh, or in a group or organization where you get to experience this. Some of you may not have been able to experience this at all. However, there's a team that all of us here are on and all of us uh, can be on. We can all have the same head coach, strive for the same goal and experience the same joy that this team can bring. This is the greatest team of all. This is God's team. God doesn't care if you're the star, if you're the last one picked. 
whatever position it is, he has a place for you on this team, and he has a job for you to be successful in. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 18, for the body does not consist of one part, but of many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand and am not a part of the body, is it not, on the contrary, still a part of the body? If the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, is it not, on the contrary, still a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But God has placed and arranged the parts of the body just as he willed and saw fit. If they were all a single organ, where would the rest of the body be? In other words, God has a plan for you, God has a job for you, and God believes in you. According to uh, Pastor Elizondo at, at, at a, at a uh, sermon I was at, 90% of Gonzalez youth are not active uh, in a member or, or a member of a church here. 90%. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, Maybe speaking to the choir, maybe all of you are our church members, but there's friends of yours that aren't. There's friends of you who may be looking to be on a team, and it doesn't matter what church it is. If you can grab their hand and bring them and, and get them on a team, uh, they can feel those characteristics and benefits of being on a team. Those same characteristics and benefits of a team come with being a part of a church and are even tenfold more when you understand that you're a part of the greatest team of all, and that's the team of Jesus Christ who loves you through success, failures, right, and wrongs. Tonight, you, you are exactly where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there for a reason. We hope you enjoy tonight's evening, and now it's time for Fields of Faith. Thank you, Coach. You're awesome. You know, guys, we're here together, and uh, I like to say that we're the big C church. See, the big C church is not the little church that we go to on a Sunday morning. It's the, it's the universal church. It's all of us who know Jesus. When God looks on Gonzalez, when he sees the church of Gonzalez, it's not Two Rivers, it's not Faith Family, it's not First Baptist. It's all of us, the church. He sees all of us. And so as, as president of the Minister Alliance, I'm so proud of all those pastors that have chosen to work together for the Big C Church. To see every man, woman, and child have repeated opportunities to see, see, hear, and respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we're about. Today, that's what we're about as well. And so on behalf of the Gonzalez Ministerial Alliance, welcome. Glad you're here. And super excited to see how God uses today to influence you to impact the next generation. Amen? Amen. I want to introduce to you uh, Josh Breslau, First Baptist uh, pastor. Let's hear it for him. Uh, Josh is going to open us uh, up in prayer this, uh, this evening. All right. Thank you, Pastor Jesse. Would you all bow in prayer with me? Lord, you are an awesome God worthy of our praise and our adoration, and we devote this time to you tonight. No matter where we are in our relationship with you, it is my prayer that over the next um, minutes that we are together, that we grow in that relationship and we grow closer to you, Lord. I'm so grateful that everyone here has joined together so that we can worship you and we are truly better together than we are apart, Lord. Lord, please forgive us where we have failed you. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God, it is my specific prayer that if there is anybody here tonight who does not know you as the one who is in charge of their life, does not know you as their Savior, that today is the day that they come to that, know that knowledge and relationship with you, Lord. We devote this time to you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Can you guys give it up for these awesome men of God? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, and next, we would love to segue the service to our testimonies. We have high school students that are willing and ready to share their story of what God has done in their lives. Can we give it up for that? I just remember when I was their age, and if someone asked me to stand in the middle of a football field and share about God, I don't know, man. I would have been trembling a little bit. But these, uh, these women of God are here, present, and they are saying yes to God. So first, I would love to introduce Cheyenne. She is one of our students over at Faith Family Church in Gonzalez, and we are just so blessed to have her. 
the growth, and I'll give you the mic in a second. I just have to introduce you. Oh yeah, you can go over here anyways. But the growth that I've seen in Cheyenne, she's been coming for the past year. It has just been amazing. And um, I'm just excited to hear her story and she is excited to share it with you all. So please lean in, give her your listening ear and um, let the Lord speak to you through this. Thank you guys. So my name is Cheyenne Hutton. Um, I was born in Alamogordo, New Mexico on June 2nd in 2006. Um, my life has never really been normal. In fact, it has been quite traumatic. Um, my biological father never wanted me, and my biological mother chose drugs and alcohol over being my parent when I was younger. However, my mom's boyfriend at the time treated me like his own. I grew up calling him dad, but he never had any rights over me. At two months old, his parents took me in, and they have raised me for as long as I can remember. I remember when I was seven years old, my mom decided she was ready to try it being a mom again. So we decided I would live with my grandparents and would split weekends between my mom and dad and my grandparents. It was very chaotic. Everything was going great until age nine. My family went through a really tough custody battle and my grandparents and mom got joint custody of me. I continued with visitation for about a year until my oldest cousin sexually assaulted me during a visitation. Um, at age 11, I started counseling and continued to do that for a few years, and everything had seemed to get better until at, one of my, at another visitation, um, my mom's father figure sexually assaulted me. After that had happened, I felt worthless. I felt like I had no need to be here. I was super depressed and hurt, especially because my mom had never believed me. I was filled with so much anger and guilt, and, blame, and I blamed myself. And when I would talk to people about it, all they would tell me is how God had a plan. And I remembered constantly thinking to myself, why me? If God has a plan, why would he do this to me? What did I do to deserve all of this? I was always so angry and I never knew what to do with it. I coped by treating everyone around me very poorly, hoping they could feel what I was going through. I had never felt so alone. It became so overwhelming that at age 14, on September 29th, 2020, I tried to take my life. I was put into a hospital for about two weeks and when I got back, it felt like everything had changed. I've always been afraid of change until one day I came to church and I listened to Lindsay Lowe's testimony. She said a verse that has stuck with me ever since I heard it, John 13, seven. You don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. When I heard this verse, I felt like it had opened my eyes and helped me to realize that God has a plan for every single one of us. I started to come to church more regularly. I mean, I grew up going to church with my grandparents, but I never really felt like I was going for the right reasons. I always knew there was a God, but I never actually felt like I knew him. When I got out of the hospital, I decided I needed to make a change, and I told myself over and over that this change was going to be good. However, I had seemed to surround myself with negative people. I had felt as if I had fallen right back into the same hole I fought so hard to get out of. I was holding back everything. I was doing bad things a 14-year-old should not even be thinking about. And then one night, my aunt and my grandma gave me a wake-up call. It was what I needed because I changed my ways in this time for the better. I started reading my Bible, which helped me in so many ways. I started listening to worship music, even outside of church, and doing those things would always keep me in a joyous mood. I started making it a habit to turn to God, especially when things got tough. I thought this was the end of the pain for a little bit, and for a little bit it was. I became very involved with the church. I volunteered at VBS. I went to Revive Church Camp the summer before my junior year, and I felt God's power in a way I had never felt before. I came home with what we call a camp high. I got back into my Bible, and my mom and I even started talking again and became super close through our journey with Jesus. Life was amazing. And then I fast forward a few months into my junior year, and my dad had claimed I was too focused on everything other than him. We both said some things out of anger, and it hit me very hard to hear these things. I started to slip again. However, this time, before I could slip too far, a friend of mine, y'all may know her, Mallory Clack, had invited me to a worship night at Faith Family. I could feel the spirit moving. Several people prayed over us. It, we worshiped together, and that night I rededicated my life to Christ. I was cleansed and made new. Ever since that day, I kept my promise to keep sharing the word of God no matter what, and that is exactly what I'm doing today. I have learned so much over the 17 years of my life. God wants us to forgive. Of course, you can forgive and still keep boundaries. He wants us to be vulnerable. You never know what people around you are going through. And one last thing. No matter how distant you think God may be, always remember, he is not a feeling. He is a fact. He is a lifestyle. He is our Lord and Savior. He is with you even in the toughest times. He is three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Senior year has been a blast so far. I have made amazing friends, surrounded myself in, in positive environments, and done everything in my power to make sure I thrive and can be successful. I now live with my dad, and everything in my life has been amazing. I have an amazing stepmom who supports every decision I make. She is one person I know I will always see front row on Wednesday or Sunday nights. I thank God that he has allowed me to have such a great family and an amazing group of friends. Wow, thank you for sharing that, Cheyenne. I'm, it blessed me. I'm praying it blessed you guys. Um, just hearing her share her story, being so honest and open, and thank God that we have a God that is willing to go through these things with us, but not only that, to help us overcome and have victory, amen? And so I'm just, again, just so proud of you. And next, we would love to welcome Emma Beering from First Baptist Church here in Gonzales. Come on up, share your testimony. We are so excited to hear from her. And um, yeah, guys, please give her your listening ear. Thank you. Thank God for this really cool weather, amen? Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Emma Beering, and I am a junior this year at Moulton High School. I'm so excited to be able to come out here and share a piece of my testimony with all of you. I began attending First Baptist Church Gonzales when I was in the fifth grade. I grew up with Christian ideals, but it wasn't until then did I learn of what Christ's sacrifice truly meant for me. I was so eager to learn everything I could about who God was and what he had really done for me that day. That summer at church camp, I gave my life to Christ and continued to grow in his love and in my faith. A verse that impacted me the most was Matthew 5:16, which says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. With this verse in my mind, I couldn't wait to use my heart of service to show others the Lord. However, I did have one slight problem, which was this, you can't grow in your faith in Christ alone, and I was quite alone. Having a relationship with Christ not only requires a vertical relationship with God, but a horizontal connection with others. In my Sunday school class, and even later when I joined youth group, no one was my age. Of course, I had my sister, and she is most definitely a beautiful example of what a true woman of God looks like. But after she had left for youth, I had no one with my, in my age group to connect with about what I was learning in the Word. So this is one small piece of where God's incredible plan unfolded in my life. When I was in the eighth grade, my friend Crystal invited me to go to Canyon Lake with her for her birthday. My parents are protective, and I knew there was no chance that was gonna happen. All of a sudden, a brilliant plan came to my mind. Why don't you come to church with me on Wednesday, I asked her, then my mom can get to know you. She of course said yes, and so Crystal, along with another friend of mine who was going on the trip, Angelus, came with me to youth that Wednesday. At first, as you can tell, my heart wasn't in it for the right reasons. Literally the only reason I had invited them was so I could have a chance at going on a lake trip. But at the end of the evening, Angelus turned to me and asked, so same time next week? After she had asked that simple question, I knew that in my heart that this was God's doing. Through this silly birthday trip, I was able to open the door to my cherished friends to their own relationships with Christ. I remembered what Jesus had said in Matthew 5, 16, and I knew this was him telling me it was my time to shine my light for him. Week after week, we continued to go to youth group, and week after week, we grew not only closer in our friendship, but in our relationships with our creator. When the time came, was I allowed to go on the trip? No. But to us, that didn't matter anymore. Over the next few years, my friends and I have gone to Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, church Christmas parties, and our favorite summer youth camp. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. From the memories I've made and the fellowship I've shared with my closest friends, I know that God is so good and that this verse definitely stands true in my life. If I had to say one thing, 
it would be to encourage you to invite your friends to church. We don't always know what God's plan is, but you can trust that his ways are so much better and higher than ours. Trust God today, and I know that he loves you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma Beering. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to have you guys out here. We're going to be sharing some more testimonies with you, but first we are going to lift our voices up to the Holy Lord and worship together. This is the first time in a long time that we've had the community that together to be able to worship, which is beautiful, and I'm just so excited to see everybody stand, lift your arms, and just praise God together. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. So would you guys join us today? Thank you so much. Amen. Let us sing. This first song is called Praise You Anywhere. Guys, we're outside. A church doesn't have to have four walls. A church can have the sky. It can have creation. It can have this beautiful, awesome temperature that we've got. We don't even feel like we're in Texas right now. It's called Praise You Anywhere. You guys, no matter what we brought into this stadium today, no matter what we've been carrying throughout this week, we've all got our battles. This song, Battle Belongs, talks about just taking it 
acknowledging it, laying it at the foot of the cross. It says, when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. And every fear I lay at your feet and I'll sing through the night. Let's start off with that chorus. And so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. No, God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. the battle you see in my victory when all I see is a mountain you see a mountain boat. and as I walk through the shadow your love surrounds me thank you God One voice. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. No God, battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, then I sing through the night. Oh God, battle belongs to you.
you cannot move, God. There's no ocean you cannot part. Oh, we need you now. So in I fight, I fight on my knees with my head lifted high. That'll be longs to you. God of revival, oh, the darkest night, and you can light it up. You can light it up. God of darkest night and you can light it up and you can light it up God of revival let hope arise and death is overcome you've already
One more time so the whole town can hear us. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. No will sing how great, how great is our God. Come on, somebody. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise out here tonight. We serve a God of revival. Amen. We don't serve a God that's dead. We don't serve a God that can't hear us. We serve a living God, and he lives on the inside of you. And if he can revive you, he can revive your situation. He can revive your health. He can revive your finances, whatever it looks like. We serve a God of revival. Amen. 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 We got victory tonight. Okay, let's go ahead and close our eyes and bow our heads. Let's pray, guys. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing here in Gonzales, Lord. We thank you, God, for revival, God, in our hearts, Lord, in our homes, God. But not only that, but in this city, God. Lord, we just pray revival over Texas, God. Lord, we just know you're big enough. We also sang how great are you, God. We're just so thankful that we serve a God that is great. We serve a God, Lord, you're a man of your word. You never let us down. You keep your promises. And Lord, we thank you for that, God. And we know there's some people out here tonight, Lord, that are believing for a change. They're believing for situations in their life to be revived. And God, we thank you that you're going to do it over and over again, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. And we all say amen. Amen, amen. You guys may be seated. Okay, we want to welcome up. We're going to continue our test. We want to welcome up Ziana Alessandro. Guys, let's give her a hand clap. We're so excited. She's going to be the last of our testimonies tonight, guys, and we know she's going to have something awesome to share. So, yes, let's listen up. Thank you, guys. Okay, hello. My name is Ziana Alessandro. I'm about to turn 17 in one week, which is really cool, and I happen to be a pastor's kid. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was seven years old, my little sister Zoe was born. Very happy, very awesome. Um, but six weeks later, an event happened that changed my world, and that is my mom had a stroke. Um, and the stroke, it changed my world. Like I said, it left me with a strong sense of loneliness, and the anxiety that I had as a kid just got worse. And when I got older, the fears and anxieties, they would just come out in different ways. I would have a fear of going places, um, and I was scared to interact with people, and I was afraid to be alone in my own room. And because of this fear and anxiety, all the simple things lost enjoyment. I didn't want to hang out with my friends and my family anymore, and my feelings of anxiety just, they held me captive. And I became even more isolated, and I wouldn't even come out of my room. I couldn't even be left home alone because I would go into a panic and I'd start freaking out because I was scared of being left alone. I was afraid of being abandoned and I, I didn't want to be left behind. And I wasn't just afraid of being abandoned by my family or my friends, I was afraid of being abandoned by God. And for a time, I thought he did and I never understood why he would let me struggle with the feelings of anxiety. I would have nights where I would cry out to God, why, why would you let me go through this? Why aren't you taking it away? How could you let me struggle in this way? Why aren't you saving me? And I never understood the answer. <laughs> and so I would beg him to take these feelings of anxiety away. And I, I feel like he never responded and I felt so alone, and I felt like it was this big battle, and it was a one-person army against this big giant, and I was always losing. And I thought people didn't care about me, and they didn't understand what I was going through. But this changed. My mindset changed. I didn't want anyone's help anymore. I was gonna do it alone. I was gonna prove I was strong enough to do it alone because it was my fight to fight. It was gonna be my battle to face. But that didn't work because I wasn't strong enough to do it alone. No one is. 
and no determination uh, and no strong will was ever going to change that. And so one night, I was done feeling alone, and I was done with the feelings of anxiety and all this loneliness. So I got on my knees, and I just cried out to God, and I poured my heart out to Him. I was so done with my situation. So I said, God, please just take this away. Please do it for me, just take it. I can't do it anymore. I need you to help me. I just can't do it. And in that moment of surrender, something changed. The feelings I had felt, they slowly started to drift away. And it felt like a 10 pound weight was being lifted off my shoulders. And I could feel God's presence. And it was like a hug of this overwhelming love for me. And I realized God never left me. He didn't stop caring about me. He's always cared and he understands. <laughs> he never left me behind. And after I felt this relief, I just went face first on the ground and I worshiped God and I praised him for what he had done for me. And I gave him thanks because he rescued me. And just because it's not as bad as it used to be, I don't feel as anxious, doesn't mean I never struggle. I still feel anxious at times, but I know now that I can go to God and he will save me from that again and again, over and over, as long as I need it. And I know he has a plan for me and I know he's had one my whole life, even while I was struggling. And I've been actively trying to help people see his love and follow God because God never abandons you. He loves you and he always chases after you. So as a parent, I'm one day I came home and we were by ourselves and I noticed that her leg, which was always restless, always moving, I noticed this one time that her leg wasn't moving, it wasn't restless anymore. And so I sat down and I said, sweetie, what's, uh, what's going on? I see a difference in you. I see that you're not pacing, you're not restless, what's going on? And, and she shared her story. And as a dad, hearing that, just my heart broke. For you parents, you know what I'm talking about. For me, I felt like this went under the radar. I didn't catch it. I didn't see it. I didn't catch it. And I felt so helpless. And I remember thinking, like, God, God, <laughs> why didn't I see it? And and so as we talked, she said, I, I felt left behind. And those words just really pierced into my heart. I got left behind. And as she said that, I felt like the, our God said, Jesse, I never left her behind. And so I got up and I said, just with tears, I just hugged her and I said, sweetie, I will never, ever leave you behind. I will be there with you. I will be there with you. And I'm sharing with you guys my peace because I know there's parents here tonight. And maybe your son or daughter is going through a similar thing that Ziana went through. And maybe they're not talking with you. There's nothing against you. Maybe they just don't feel comfortable or for whatever reason, they're fighting this battle. And uh, parents, I just want to tell you, like, uh, don't be disheartened. Like your kids have a voice and they're going through some stuff. And this is what I feel God taught me. He taught me to 
to just be there face to face with Gianna and my other kids. Caleb over here in the back and the electric. Nemi over there in the back with the bass and my little Zoe, nine-year-old. I felt like God said, you need to talk with them face to face. Like really face to face. Understand them, talk with them. Don't be on your, on your phone. Then I also felt like God said, tender, appropriate touch to give my daughter hugs, to try and give my sons hugs. And then I felt like he was saying, validate their vulnerability. Just listen. That's what our kids need. Our kids need for us to listen. Really listen. Put the phone down. Hear them. And then I felt like God said, invite me into the process and I'll be there. And maybe you're here tonight and you're the one who struggles with worry, anxiety, and fear. And you're trying to go at it by yourself. And you've been running. I want to tell you about a God who never stops chasing after you. He never stops chasing after you. And we're going to sing to that God. Will you stand with me? Lord Jesus, tonight we acknowledge that you never stop chasing us. Into the natural eye, your love looks reckless, Lord. It looks reckless. It may not be reckless, but it looks reckless when you leave the 99 to chase after the one. It looks reckless. In that parable of the woman who lost the coin and she disturbs her household to find that coin, it looks reckless to the world. But to you, Lord, it's your never-ending love. Sweet Jesus, it looks reckless when the prodigal son comes back and the father takes him back. It looks reckless for you to take us back, and yet you take us back. Lord God, we love you, and we thank you for that never-ending love. It's in your name we pray. And all of God's people together with one voice said, Amen.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it if you believe it. There's no shadow you won't light up. here tonight that your love is endless, Lord. You pour it out to us, Lord. Not because we deserve it, Lord, but because your, your son, Jesus, Lord, has made the way for all of us. For all of us who put our faith in you, Jesus. To know you as Abba, Father, Papa. <laughs> the lover of our soul. Thank you, Jesus. You never give up on us. Amen. I want to introduce to you our main speaker this morning. Garrett has worked with youth uh, for many, many years. I want to invite you to come uh, up here. One of the things about uh, Garrett is that he's been so willing to just come on short notice and uh, bring, bring the word of God this, uh, this night. And let's hear it for him this, this night. Thank you, brother. God bless you, man. So good to be here. All right, let's just give it up for all the testimonies and, and just, the, just the worship. It's so good to just uh, be here. Uh, just, just see this unity, right? Just seeing the kingdom of God, right? It's bigger than one local church. Uh, when we all gather together, it's the kingdom of God. Uh, and so, so good to be here tonight. As I said, my name's Garrett, and I live in Dallas. So go Cowboys, right? Go Cowboys. Yeah. You know, it's so great to see all this unity because uh, in the next couple of days or maybe after this event's over, Texas will not be so unified if the Astros win tonight. So I want to say this, go Rangers, all right? So so good to be here, and uh, I travel and do this full time, and, and I live for events like this because I believe that gatherings like this change the world, amen? I, be I believe that God is doing something, and if you're here tonight, God has a word for you. And I love the theme, and, and thank God for these students uh, that stood up boldly in front of uh, all of you and their peers. Let's thank God for them, right? Because I believe this. Every time that God has done something big in the world, as, as far as spiritual awakening, he's used the next generation to do it. He's used teenagers. He's used college students. Every time in history, uh, not through preachers like me, but through them, right? They're leading the way. So let's praise God for Gen Z leading tonight the way they have. So tonight, I really want to talk to you uh, through God's Word on how to be free from fear and anxiety. How do you break free? Because in the last few years, uh, the, the, uh, the anxiety statistics have spiked amongst this generation. Suicide rates have gone up since COVID. Uh, th this is like a, a national, I will say, crisis. So maybe you're here and you find yourself gripped by fear and anxiety. And you're like, how do I get out of it? 
And I want to tell you this, as a preacher, that I have had times in my life and still do that I've battled fear and anxiety. I've had times where I've been so paralyzed by it that I didn't want to get out of bed. And the only thing that has freed me from it is Jesus and his kingdom. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. So I want, to, I want you to imagine tonight, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big, big sports fan. All right, we got any sports fans out here? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big, big Dallas Cowboys fan. So growing up, uh, a, a hero of mine was Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, right? Growing up in the 90s. So I want you to imagine if, if your favorite athlete or, or your favorite celebrity. Maybe you're like, I don't care about sports. I'm all about Taylor Swift or Taylor Swift or Travis Kelsey or somebody just, just you were in their presence. They came here tonight. Like your attention, like, like if Coach Prime was here, right? My, our attention would, would be off of what we were going through. And we'd be like, wow, you know, I'm in the presence of somebody that I, I respect and I admire and I look up to. And what would happen in that moment is you would have like, like a, a healthy fear. Right, not a fear of like running high, but a fear of like trembling in respect. And this is what I've learned of, after following Jesus uh, for several years and, and battling and, and through fear and anxiety is this. This is what frees us from anxiety. The fear of Jesus, the fear of the Lord, frees you from the fear, uh, from fear and anxiety. It's the fear of the Lord is the key. Not like, hey, I want to run and hide from the Lord. But the book of Proverbs says the fear of the Lord is the key to everything in life. Everything that you go after in life, whether, whether it's sports or relationships or jobs or whatever it is, family unit, it's the fear of the Lord. And not a fear of like, man, I'm so scared of you, I want to run and hide, but a fear of like, man, I, I'm trembling in your presence. I'm so in awe that, I, that I'll do anything you ask me to do. And here's the good news tonight is that Jesus addressed fear and anxiety. In what's called the greatest sermon in the world out of the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. And I want to read some from you from Matthew 6. And if you want to follow along, I'm going to read from Matthew 6, verse 25 through 34. Now, what I love about the book of Matthew is it's about a king and a kingdom, Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And what Jesus is saying is this, and this is the message for us as we live in the 21st century, battling with, with fear and anxiety and knowing that all of us have a smartphone in our face, right? And the, and the reality that all of us, young and old, have a smartphone in our face causes anxiety and stress levels to, to spike. Because we're discipled more by Fox News and CNN News than the good news, anxiety levels have gone up, Right? Right? So what we need to do is, as Jesus says, I'm the king of kings and lord of lords, and I have a kingdom, and my kingdom is upside down. So if you want to be free from the fear of tra uh, and the trap of anxiety and fear, then you've got to focus on me and my upside down kingdom. You've got to be able to live differently than the rest of the world does. But there's a path to freedom tonight. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, there's freedom, Right? Oh, there's freedom tonight. Watch. Jesus addressed it thousands of years ago, and it, these words ring loud today, right? So Matthew 6, verse 25 says this. Jesus' words. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat. I've already failed that today. I was like, what will I eat today? And God said, Terry Black's barbecue, because you're going to pass it on the way here. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. What, what you will eat or what you will drink, or how many of you said, I got to have a cup of coffee when I get up in the morning? Because caffeine plus the Holy Spirit equals spiritual awakening, right? <laughs> what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will wear isn't life more than fo food and the body more than clothing. Consider the birds of the sky, he says. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you wor uh, worth more than them? So here's the first thing I want to say tonight is this. About, about anxiety, okay? And then I, I want to tell you a truth about anxiety and then a truth how to combat it, right? And have victory and freedom over it. Here's the, here's the first truth about anxiety. Anxiety is a control freak. Anxiety is a control freak. It comes when we want to control our lives, and all of us in there in the same boat, including me, when we want to control our lives and control circumstances around us. But what we realize is this, is we're really not in charge of anything that happens. 
We're not in charge of our birth, our breath, or our death, right? There's a God that created the universe that we're worshiping tonight. There's a God that created the universe, the Bible says, that puts you together in your mother's womb. And I want to tell you tonight that you were not an accident, that you didn't come from an ape or you didn't come from a piece of goo that just exploded, that you came from God. And that God knit you together in your mother's womb. And that if you want to be free from anxiety, you've got to look past your circumstances, past what's going on, and look at the God who created the universe. That's what he's saying. He says, hey, why are you so worried about your life, what you're going to eat? He's saying what you're going to drink and your clothes. I mean, that's why we got outdoor shopping malls, right, and indoor malls, like everybody, and, and Amazon Prime. Can I get praise God on that? Amaz and all that because we're worried about how we're going to, how we look, and we all do, right? He says you're worried about all these things and, and, and worried about what people think. That's a big deal. Worrying about the approval of people. I know that can be a trap. It's been a trap for me. Some of you have not taken the next step to follow Jesus because you're worried about what someone thinks about you. And that's young and old. And Jesus says, you're focusing on the created things instead of the creator. Anxiety is a control freak. And the way to combat that is to look at how awesome your creator is. To look at his majesty and his power and his glory and his strength and the fact that he really is the only one that controls everything. He controls the nations, right? Some of you are so gripped by fear about what's going on around the world. And Jesus said, hey, there's always going to be wars until I come again. But look at me because I have all authority in heaven and on earth. He's saying, hey, why are you so worried about what you're wearing? Because I've made the grass and the plants that make your clothes. He said, how are you so worried about what you're going to eat? If I feed the birds, and I care about you more than the birds. Now, understand this, that you're valuable to God. Think about one thing that Satan, anxiety is his tool that he'll lie to us through. Or he'll tell us, you're not valued. You're not important. You're not, in, you're not significant. You're isolated, you're lonely, and God says, Jesus says, you're more value than the birds. You know, we live in a culture that we value animals more than humans. We love our fur babies. I have a, we have a white toy poodle in our family, and he's a diva. But you know what? I love my kids more than him. We're a culture that values our dogs more than people, but you know what? God values people over everything and everyone else and all the creation. God values human beings. It said every human being was made in God's image. He says this, and I take care of the birds, and I take care of the grass. He says this, can you add one moment to your lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about your clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, O you of little faith? God loves you. God created you. And having a big picture of God is what's going to free you from anxiety and fear tonight. This past week, now my family, a little bit about my family, uh, I have a, a six-year-old son. I have a wife. Her name's Rachel. We've been married 12 years. I have a six-year-old son. And then during the COVID period, we found out that we were pregnant with twin boys. We got two-and-a-half-year-old twin boys, sons of destruction is what I call them. These boys are destroyers of worlds of houses, of anything in their path. And I'm praying that, please, God, channel their energy for the kingdom. And so we, got, we had this bright idea months ago. Let's take our whole family to Colorado to the mountains. Let's go, let's go stay near Pikes Peak, and let's take these two-and-a-half-year-old toddlers on a 12-hour drive. Don't do that, okay? That's a bad mistake. I'm like, we should have just went to, like, Galveston or, like, you know, two hours away, or we could still have a, go to a lake somewhere an hour away. But we drove 12 hours there and back. And one thing that I'm afraid of is heights. Anybody can identify? I'm afraid of heights, man. I don't like going up high places. And I have dreams about me taking toddlers on a mountain and them just like falling and I can't catch them. And my wife, she's a daredevil. She loves mountains, loves heights. I like to go stand on the edge. So our twins like to run. They like to get away from us. And so what we did was on Amazon, we purchased leashes. 
child, not, not dog leashes. There's child leashes where it attaches. Anybody got a leash for their toddler? Come on. It's, it's God's gift. We're protecting them. And I put, I put one on my wrist and on others with wrist, and my wife takes another one. So our twins, Grayson and Griffin, so we're like, hey, we've got to drive to the top of Pikes Peak. Now, if you don't know how high Pikes Peak is, it's 14,000 feet up in the air. I'm from Texas. Besides the hill country, this place is flat, okay? I'm, we're flatlanders out here. We don't really have mountains, okay? And so we go all the way to the top of Pikes Peak, and we get to the top, and there's no railing on the side. It's like you in the car in a 14,000-foot drop, and I am not driving. My wife is. I trust her, right? She's not scared, but she's in a 10 and 2 position. And, and I'm like, what? And we're driving up, and, and my, my, I'm, I'm like next to a passenger door, which means this. If my door flies open, I'm going down the mountain. Okay, I'm, it's me over here. My brother is in the middle, who's eight years younger than me, and one of the twins on the other side. And I'm so scared going up this mountain that I grab my brother's arm and just like bury my head in his armpit. I'm like, I can't look. But then something happened. I peeked. Okay, and I looked, and what happened? I forgot about my fear of heights because I was so enthralled by the majesty and beauty of the mountains. I, I was so taken back by the view that when we got to the top, I was okay. But when we got to the top, I said, hey, babe, we're leashing these toddlers. They're going on a leash because I don't want them running off the side of the mountain. What is it that's going to save us or free us from the traps that are in this life? The traps of fear, being gripped by fear, being gripped by anxiety. What is it? It's taking our eyes off of ourselves, taking our eyes off of our circumstances, and looking at the majesty of Jesus. The reality that he is the king of kings and that he is the Lord of lords and that he cares about us more than the grass, more than the animals. And he loves us and he wants to take care of us. He wants to give us that, that touch as the pastor was talking about. God, it says this, your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you of more value than they? What, what comes to your mind when you think about Jesus? I think a lot of times we have a watered down picture of who Jesus is. We picture him like one of us, right? I asked this kid, this student one time in McDonald's, eat, we were eating fake chicken nuggets. And I, and I asked him, I was like, man, we got into this spiritual conversation. He was in ninth grade. And I said, what comes to your heart and mind when you think about Jesus? I said, if Jesus were to allow us to physically see him in this McDonald's, what would we do? And he said, I would say, he literally said a T-shirt from the 90s. He said, I would say, come sit by me, Jesus, my homeboy. I'd be like, I don't think he would do that. Because we like to think about Jesus like what he looked like in human form. A lot of people like to argue, was he white? Was he black? Was he Hispanic? He was neither one of those. Like when he was physically here, because he's the God that created the universe, he wrapped himself in a human body and came to earth. When he was here, he looked like people from Israel, right? He looked like when he was from the Middle East. But of Jesus tonight, if he were to allow us to physically see him with our own eyes, which he's present with us, but if we, he were to allow us to physically see him with our own eyes, how would we react? You wouldn't be like, hey, Jesus, come sit up here with me. Or maybe some of you would be like, hand Jesus the mic. I know I would sit down. Let's let him tell us. You know what we would all do, including myself? We would all fall flat on our faces as though we were dead. Because it would be the most awe-inspiring, beautiful sight that we've ever seen times a billion. And my words can't even do that justice. Now, we got to see Jesus as not like a king, it's not like a mascot, or not somebody that just, like, in case of emergency, you're here to get us out of trouble. But we got to see Jesus as who he is now. He's enthroned. He is sitting on the throne over all the universe. Because why? He's been crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Why is that? Because he won the heavyweight championship over sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he stands as an undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion over sin, death. Why? Because he came into the world and died on the cross for your sin and my sin. When he was hanging on the cross, he came into this world, understand, to lay his life down. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross, dying for our sin, you know what he was experiencing? All the anxiety that you've ever experienced. We don't serve a God. We don't have a God who doesn't know what we're going through or can't identify tonight what we're going through. It says he is a Savior that sympathizes with our weaknesses. Why? Because in every way, he was tempted just like we are. He faced stress. He faced anxiety. 
He was a little depressed, right? He was so stressed in the garden before he was crucified because he was about to take God's wrath, right? He was about to die for the sins of the world that he began to sweat and drop drops of blood. He knows what it's like to be human. But you know what? He beat all of that. And because he beat it, we can beat it. Because he died for not only that, but he was buried in a grave. And then three days later, he rose from the dead and he's alive. And after he rose from the dead, he appeared to over 500 witnesses, including his followers. And not only after that, that, that story isn't done after he raised from there, what did he do? He hung out on the earth for a little while, appeared to his disciples, and then it says he ascended back to heaven. And he sat back down at the right hand of God and on his throne as King of kings and Lord of lords. And I got a friend who says Jesus didn't sit back down on his throne because he needed a Starbucks break. He sat back down on his throne because his work was finished. He beat death. He beat, he beat mental illness. He beat everything, right? He beat everything that beats us. It says in 1 John 3 that he came down into the world to destroy the works of the devil. That's why he did it. And he's, he wants to take care of you, and he wants to love you. And here's what I've learned. Because, you know, I grew up in a great Christian home. I grew up kind of in a bubble. I grew up in a Christian bubble. I'm a pastor's kid. And, when I, and, and I got on fire for the Lord at youth camp. That's my story. And, and I love, that's why I love those environments. I heard some of those testimonies. And then I, when I turned 18, I went from Louisiana, two-lane roads to six-lane freeways in Dallas. I came to Dallas. And all of a sudden, something happened. I began to be gripped by fear and anxiety. I began to, I, I woke up one day just fearing for my life. And I went through a battle. And why did the Lord let me go through that? Why does the Lord let you go through anxiety and depression? It's so that, not, it's so that your faith in him won't shrink. It's so that it will grow. Because he likes to put us in those situations so that we won't rely on our own strength, but we rely on his power that raised up Jesus from the dead. So if you're in that situation tonight, you're in that for a reason. So this is what I want to challenge you to do. Don't run from Jesus, run to Jesus. Just like our sister's testimony tonight. What did I run to? I ran to God's word. And sometimes, yes, we have to, we need to, God has gifted us with people that, that, that are gifted to counsel us, like counselors, right? Professionals, yes, go to them. Read your Bible, right? Use the community and body around you. Show up in the gatherings like you did tonight. You can't live the Christian life alone. But it was reading God's word and following Jesus despite how I felt. And this is what I learned, and this is why I had this slogan. I, pu I put my faith in Jesus over my feelings. Don't trust your feelings tonight because they can be like Taco Bell. When you eat there, things change. Your feelings change. It's like feelings are like the ice cream machine at McDonald's. You can't trust them, okay? But you trust Jesus, and Jesus transforms your desires. Here's the last thing, and the second thing tonight is this, is that anxiety is a purpose thief. Anxiety is a purpose thief. There's Jesus, and he's the king, and he has a kingdom that will not end. Watch this. Watch what happens. And I'm almost done, all right? I want you to look at your neighbor and say, pay attention, all right? For the Gentile, watch this. Watch this. Okay, now look at me, all right? Now look at me, all right? I know we're outside, and there's drones over us. I'm ADD too, and you're like, uh, look, look at this. I'm almost done, all right? Watch this. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. People that don't know God chase after the things that are in front of us. But watch this. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble of its own. That Jesus has a kingdom. What does that mean? Is that Jesus has purpose for you. One of the things that entrap us and leads us to depression and that leads us to hopelessness is, is, is thinking that we don't have any purpose in this life. And you got a purpose tonight, and it's the kingdom of God. And you know what Jesus says about his kingdom? That it's here and not yet. That means this, that the only thing stand, that will be standing at the end of time is Jesus and his kingdom. And here's when we, when we get gripped by fear and when we get gripped by anxiety. It's when we start chasing after what God created instead of the creator. When we start chasing after things that are going to disappear instead of God's kingdom. He's saying this, the way to freedom, the way to true freedom is, is not loving yourself more, which is what our culture tells us. It's not, it's not chasing after things that don't matter. 
It's not chasing after relationships. What it, what, the, way, the way to true freedom is truly laying your life down and surrendering everything that you are and that you have to King Jesus. That's the way to freedom. It's not controlling more and keeping more and trying to keep yourself safe more. It's actually the opposite. It's actually tonight, it's upside down. It's laying your life down. It's surrendering everything. I remember when I was 16 years old, one thing I was worried about is relationships. I got to have a girlfriend so I can drive her around in my mom's car, right? And go on dates. So when I was 16, I got my first girlfriend. And what happened was she, her youth group was going to go to camp with my youth group. And she broke up with me on Friday before camp. It was devastating. I was worried about that. You know what? It caused me a lot of anxiety. So I said, you know what? When I go to camp, I'm going to find a girlfriend from another state and make her jealous. So I did. I did. But something happened. That week, in the middle of the week, as, as there, there, were, there, were, there was worship like tonight and God's word being preached, the Holy Spirit hijacked that week. And he says this, I want to show you something bigger than what you want for your life. I want to show you something better than what you want for your life. I want you to lay your life down, and I want you, I want you to surrender to what you're doing now. Years later, it's 20 years later since I surrendered to ministry. I'm 36 years old now almost 37 and you know what that day I laid everything down even my want of a relationship for the kingdom of God and you now you know what I'm saying now I've been married to Rachel for seven years and I'm thinking God thank you that you didn't let me marry that girl thank you for telling her to break up with me because what you have for my life is so much better and you know what relieved the anxiety what relieved the anxiety was surrendering to Jesus's purpose Surrendering to Jesus' kingdom, letting go, not controlling more, but letting go, and I never felt so free. Fast forward, there's another freeing thing that happened to me a couple of years ago where I found myself, I, I was serving on staff at a church, and I'm kind of like a free spirit. I like to travel and go everywhere, but I was in one spot, right? And, and I began, and, and then God, uh, that, it was the year of 2021, and we started out the year by having twins, and we went from one to three kids, which is super overwhelming. And we had three kids under the age of three. And what happened, I found myself gripped by fear and anxiety again. And, and I began to be miserable. And I began to be depressed. And I, be, I began to be overwhelmed. Anybody been like that? And I realized God was speaking to me. God was doing something. And I had a friend that I was real close to that was a mentor of mine that did what I was doing now, who traveled and preached the gospel full time. He passed away from COVID unexpectedly. Devastated me. And the day I was devastated by all that, I got away and I spent time with the Lord. You see, the, the way to combat anxiety is not scrolling Instagram more. It's not scrolling Facebook more. Sometimes, you know, you, you got to take the remote and turn off the TV you got to put your phone down. you got to put your iPad down. you got to put the controller down. Come on. you got to put things down. you got to take out God's Word and take out a journal and go spend time with Him. See, that's countercultural with screens in our face all the time. But that's what I did. And God said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to serve a different purpose in my kingdom. I want you to, to quit your job, right? I want you to give up benefits, and I want you to serve me full-time as a missionary. That's what I want from your life. And I'm like, God, that's going to lead to more worry and fear. But a couple months went by, and he eventually spoke to my wife about it. And we have twins that are five months old. We have a three-year-old. Are you crazy? But we jumped off the diving board. You know what happened? That stress and fear and anxiety went away. Because what happens, you get free from it when you surrender more to Jesus. It's when you jump off and jump into the arms of Jesus that he captures you. And that's where real freedom is found, is by risking everything to follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords tonight. In closing tonight, and the band can go ahead and come back up, and we're going to sing our last song. And what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to do just a response time. Because I believe God has spoken tonight. God has spoken through the worship God has spoken tonight through testimonies of these students. He's already preached. I, I, they could just preach, right? I didn't really have to say anything because the Spirit, Holy Spirit was already speaking. And there's some of you that came out here tonight and, and you are, you don't, you're not a follower of Jesus. You're not a part of the kingdom of God. You don't, the reality is you may even be a member of a church, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus. 
And you know what? At the end of time, when it's only Jesus and his kingdom standing, you're not going to be a part of that. That's the reality. Unless in this life, you give your life to Jesus. What, you say, what does it take to find this freedom, Garrett? What does it take to, to become part of this, to become part of the kingdom of God? You're not born into it. You're born into sin. Just like Coach said, I love what your coach said, you're either on one team or the other. You're either on God's kingdom, you're either serving Jesus' kingdom tonight, or you're a part of Satan's kingdom. And here's the reality. You were born into the world in Satan's kingdom. But he, don't, he doesn't love you. He wants to enslave you. But Jesus, the, the reason why he came to this world and died for you is to adopt you and to free you and bring you into his kingdom. But here's the deal. you got to quit chasing things that disappear and chase Jesus. You know what? My, my two-year-olds, they get entertained easy. And I want to connect with them and spend time with them, but one thing they love is bubbles. You just, we just got a big, giant bubble machine outside. They're like, bubble, bubble, bubble. And if we just blow, like, I got tired of blowing bubbles. So we bought, we bought a big machine for Christmas, and there it is. It just blows bubbles as long as you keep the stuff in it, right? But they get so entertained by bubbles. And I'm like, yeah, WD, somebody said WD-40. I don't know why. But watch this. Think about it. They get so entertained. And I, as their dad, as a father who loves them, I said there's so much more to life, but they love those bubbles. And I want you to think about your life. Your life is like a bubble, the Bible says. I'm terrible at this. My wife is better. She does it. Your life is like a bubble. Think about it. That's right. She said, my wife said, when you, you do this illustration, blow soft. Your life. Maybe it's the wind. It's even shorter than that. There it is. Look. There we go. Look at that. Come on. That's the key to this. If you buy these at Walmart, man, that's the key right there. Your life is a bubble. Some of you are chasing after relationships. And what are they going to do? They're going to pop. The culture says, you know, chase after yourself. It's going to go away. Maybe, maybe if, I'm just, if, I, if I'm a different sex, maybe I'll be satisfied. Maybe if I just try this relationship, I'll be satisfied. But it's a mist that appears a little while and then vanishes away. When, when we get gripped by fear and anxiety, yeah, bubbles, right? All the kids are paying attention. It's because we chase after these things, accomplishments. The Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, never going to happen. We, we chase after careers. We chase after money, right? What are you chasing after? That anxiety and fear control you when you chase after things that are going to vanish for a little while, after, after just a little while. But the only thing that's real and that's tangible and that's going to stay is Jesus Christ and his kingdom. He's the one that loves you. He's the one that's going to be there for you. He's, he says, I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. Guess what? He defeated death, so he's undefeated. He's never going to die. You know what? He crushed Satan's kingdom. So what team are you on? Some of you are on Satan's kingdom, right? He, he lures you with things that, that are fun for a little while, that feel good, but they vanish. And you might be the most popular person in school. You might be the best athlete tonight. You might be the person people look to, but on like, the inside, you're shattered. You're broken you're, because you're serving a kingdom that's shattered. This world will pass away. We serve the bubbles of politics, of everything that are going to pass away, but Jesus will only be standing. Have you given your life to him tonight? And I want to I give you that opportunity to say, Garrett, some of you are listening, and you're like, I want to give my life to Jesus, and we want to give you that opportunity. So what I want everybody to do tonight is just bow your head and close your eyes. There's a reason why you're here tonight. You might have just come with friends. You might have just come because somebody invited you. But you are mainly here because the God that orchestrates the universe providentially put it together that you would be here tonight to hear this message. And there's those of you that have, that have heard this message and God has spoken to you. God has said, you know what, tonight you need to give your life to me. Well, how do you do that? Well, the Bible says it's simple. The Bible says you gotta confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead Romans 10 9 and 10 and you will be saved it's just calling out to him it's surrendering everything to him bowing your knee to King Jesus giving everything to him that's what it is 
And you got to have that moment. God gives you that moment like tonight that will lead to a movement. Just like these students stood up and they said, I had a moment with Jesus. I hit my face. I fell on the floor. I cried out to Jesus. And now I want to tell all my friends about him. That's what life is all about. They found a king and they realized that he's got a kingdom that won't end. And they gave their lives up to serve him. Have you done that tonight? Have you done that tonight? I want to give you that opportunity. And there's a very organized way that we are going to do that. But first of all, I want to deal uh, with those that you say, I want salvation. I want Jesus tonight. I want to give my life to him. I want to give you that opportunity. So if you're here tonight and you're like, Garrett, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to come to know him. I want a relationship with him. I'm ready to be free. If that's you, I want to give you that opportunity. So if that's you tonight and you want Jesus and you want salvation, this is what I want. I want to pray for you, okay? And then I'm going to ask you to respond. There's going to be people that are ready to talk to you. There's people that are already ready, that are trained, that want to give you, because extended family is important. you got to have that. You can't follow Jesus without it, without the body. So they're here. They're wearing orange tags. But if you're here and you need Jesus, I'm going to ask you to respond. So if that's you tonight and you need Jesus, you say, Garrett, I want a relationship with Jesus. God is speaking to me about that right now. If that's you, I just want you to look at me and just raise your hand right now. I need Jesus, Garrett. Come on, real high where I can see it. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Come on, hands real high. There are hands all over the place. Raise your hand real high, okay. All right, this is what I want you to do right now. If you are raising your hand, I want you to bow your head and just close your eyes. You say, Garrett, what does it take? It's simple. It's the simple truth of calling out to him because he loves you and he hears you tonight. And I want you to pretend like it's just you and him in the room. And I want you to call out to him because your faith has to be your faith, not your pastor's faith or someone else's faith, but yours. So I want you to call out to Jesus where you're at. And then I want to connect you with someone that can help you because this isn't the end, it's the beginning. That can connect you to family, that can help you, that can help you grow, that can talk with you. But if you're here, I want to help you. And understand, it's not a magical prayer, it's what's going on in your heart. It's authenticity from your heart saying, I'm turning away from my sin and I'm trusting Jesus. So if that's you and you raised your hand, I wanna, I'm gonna pray, all right? But I want you to take this, this prayer and make it your prayer to God. Pretend like it's just you and him in the room and I want you to call out to God with authenticity and sincerity. And, I want you, and I'm gonna just be a guide to you, just a guide. But I want you to take this prayer, make it your prayer to God. So if you wanna give your life to Jesus, I want you to close your eyes. And imagine Jesus on his throne as he is right now. Picture him the right way, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And I want you to go to him in your heart and say this, and say this after me, but I want you to take it, your prayer, make it your prayer to God. So say this, Jesus, tell him out loud, I believe that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Tell him right now, I believe that you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you were buried in a grave. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you were alive. And I surrender my life to you, tell him. I give everything to you. And I receive the forgiveness of sins. And I receive the freeing gift of the Holy Spirit to live in my life until I meet you face to face. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're praying that and you're seeking the Lord, if you'll look over to my left and your right, there's some orange signs. There's actually a sign down there that says, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. All right, and there's people there. You see the people in blue waving their arms. They want to talk to you and they want to connect you and they want to give you resources that can help you. Not only that, but they want to give you an extended family to support you, right? To, to, we, we need each other. We need, like tonight, we need to link arms. So if you prayed that tonight, you raised your hand and you prayed and you asked Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord, I want you to get up from your seat and just quietly walk down there towards those people in the blue sign. And if you need to take somebody with you, you can do that, all right? If you need to take a friend with you, it's okay, all right? And understand, this isn't a time to embarrass you or call you out. This is a time to respond. So if that was you, you prayed to receive Jesus. Would you quietly just get up and start making your way down and go join these, these wonderful people in the blue shirt down here? Come on, let's give them encouragement, all right? 
Let's give them encouragement. Come on. I prayed to receive Jesus. And what we can do right now is everybody just stand and be ready to worship, all right? Let's just stand and get ready to sing. But if you, if you prayed to receive Jesus in this moment, you make your way down. Come on. You can make your way down and go join them on the blue sign. And let's give them some encouragement, all right? That's bold. That takes a lot, right? That takes a lot. And the Holy Spirit is giving them that boldness to step out and say, I'm giving my life to Jesus. And I'm not ashamed about it. Come on, you go. If you pray, you go. Maybe you're here and you're like, Garrett, I didn't raise my hand. Garrett, I didn't even pray, but I know I need Jesus right now. They will pray with you. There's people down there that will pray with you, and they, they will show you how you can know Jesus, all right? There's pastors here. Could you be making your way down right now? Come on. If that's you, you just go. You just go. Garrett, I didn't pray, but I need to go. You respond. Let's thank God again for that, right? Let's thank the Lord for that. That's why God put this event together, right? There's, there's new brothers and sisters in Christ that were born into the family of God tonight, that were born into the kingdom of God. So you can make your way down there. Now, here's the second thing tonight. Here's the second thing tonight. Maybe you're here and you're like, man, Garrett, I know I'm a Jesus follower. Garrett, I know that, that, that I've surrendered my life to Jesus. I know that I'm saved, but I've gotten off the path. I was like the son who ran away from his father and was wasting his life for a little bit, but he ran back home. And I need to run back home. I need, I'm having a time of just revival tonight, as the song talked about. I'm having a time of repentance and renewal, and I just want to make that public. That's me, and I want to talk to somebody about that. There's another sign that says I want to rededicate my life to Christ. And that's what that's for. And that provides you, you got to tell somebody, right? Maybe you got isolated from the body and you're like, I'm ready to come back. You got to isolate it from church. Hey, we need each other. We can't live the Christian life in our living room, eating pancakes, drinking orange juice, right? We need, we need the body. We got to come back home. We can't be like a severed limb over there, an arm flopping around. We need, we need Jesus. We need each other. So you're like, Garrett, I need to recommit. So if that's you tonight, I'm being revived. I'm a Christian, but I'm being revived. Please raise your hand tonight if that's you. That's me. I'm feeling revival tonight. I'm feeling God's presence like I have in a long time, and I just need to renew, and I need to tell somebody about it. If that's you and you're raising your hand, would you make your way down, and would you go join those folks on my left down at the second sign over there? Could you make your way down and go join them? Come on. I need some, I, I need some renewal. I'm being revived. You may call it rededicate. I need that tonight. Come on. I need somebody to pray with me tonight. You be making your way down. Let's, let's thank God for their courage. Let's give them encouragement tonight from the family. Come on. Just be making your way down and go join these people on the second sign tonight. That's amazing. Praise God. Praise God. And here's the reality. As you're making your way down, here's the third thing. Maybe you're just like, Garrett, I need some general prayer. I got a crisis going on, and I, I, need, to, I need to let somebody know about it. I need support. I need prayer. I got something going on. I have a need. I, you got a mountain in your life. I don't know what it is. You just need prayer. Would you be, we, there's another sign over there that says prayer, okay, that says prayer. Would you be making your way down for that? If that's you, say, Garrett, I need prayer tonight. If that's you, raise your hand. I just need some prayer. I need somebody to pray with me. I need support. Go, would you make your way down and go join that third sign over there? Amen. Maybe you're here now to understand that we got a mental health crisis going on in our nation right now. We got a mental health crisis that's, that's gripped, I think, through the rise of just going through a pandemic and wars and mass shootings and just screens on every time. Screens are in our face all the time and every time something bad happens. Or maybe your chemicals in your brain, because we live in a fallen world, aren't working right, right? Sometimes that happens and we need help. Just like our bodies break down and we need doctors. Sometimes our mind just breaks down and sometimes the chemicals don't work right and we need counselors, we need professionals. Those are God's gift to us. And when there's no shame in using them, there's no stigma because God sends people in our life to talk with us. I thank God for the counselors that God has put in my life. God speaks through people, right? God equips people just like he equips doctors. If we get a mass tumor, we're gonna go to the doctor. Some of you got stuff going on in your heart and mind and you're gripped. Maybe it's just clinical depression. I don't know what it is, but there's people over here that are willing to help you that, that have come tonight. There's a tent right here. I was thinking that's what it was. Thank you for reminding me. There's a tent right here with mental health professionals 
with counselors and people that can equip you. You know what? I'm not equipped to help you handle some of the things going on in your mind, but they are, right? God has gifted them to do that. And you need to be, and, and the one thing the enemy wants you to do is be isolated. He wants to get you by yourself and think, don't tell anybody about this. And I understand this, that's a lie. That's not from the Lord. So if that's you tonight, you're like, Garrett, I, I struggle with my mental health and I just want to talk to someone. There's a tent over here with people ready to minister to you and talk to you and give you that help you need. So if that's you, if that's you right now, just make your way down. Come on. There's no shame and guilt. There's just celebration that God is speaking to you and working through this situation, all right? So be making your way down and just go find these people in the tent right here. Maybe you're like, yeah, I, 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 I'm having suicidal thoughts or there's stuff going on. It tells somebody, all right? Tell somebody and that tent is available because the churches of this community said, you know what? We want to speak to mental health. We want to provide a family. We want to provide people. We want to provide help. They, they say, you are not alone. And that's exactly what Jesus says, that you are not alone. So if you're dealing with stuff, you need somebody to talk to, just make your way down to that tent, whatever it is tonight and let's thank God right let's thank God for the authenticity the boldness you know what you know one thing we need in the body is transparency transparency not covering up things with the religious mask if you're a church person tonight just saying you know what Jesus says I want people that worship me in spirit and in truth I want people to say you know what I'm jacked up and broken and I need Jesus you know what I'm a preacher but I'm a jacked up broken man and I need Jesus just ask my wife I need the Lord every minute every second of my life we need him the worst spot we can be in is to be prideful and to say I got it all together I don't need anything I don't need people I just need me that's a lie from the devil tonight. we need each other we need Jesus we need the body don't buy into the lie. I can, I, can, I can watch YouTube videos of preachers in my bedroom by myself. I don't need the church. That's a lie from the enemy. Because you know what? People from hurting people hurt people. People from the church are going to hurt us. But you know what? It's worth the risk. Because Jesus loves his bride. And Jesus says, I, on this rock, I built my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. That's the truth tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. And we're just going to worship. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did in this room. God, I thank you for those that have given their life to you. God, I pray you would protect them from the evil one. God, I pray you'll connect them to one of these amazing local churches that are represented out here. That they will begin to grow and be disciples. We thank you for the unity that's expressed here tonight amongst the churches and leadership. We know you, Jesus, you said the world will know that you, that you were sent of the body of Christ is unified and we see that in this town and so we know you're pouring your spirit out because of that thank you god i thank you for those that are having renewal and repentance and rededication may this be a true kairos moment where they say man that night i took a next step in my journey with jesus lord i pray for those over there talking to counselors god i think i pray that you would remove this stigma that that it's bad to go that to need help and talk to someone because it's not because you have those Counselors are gifts. Mental health professionals are gifts, and they're God, they're graces from you, Lord. And I pray you'd raise up more, God, to, to link arms with the body to say, hey, you got people you can talk to. You're not alone. That Jesus values your life. He come to give you life. And he's in charge of the end and the beginning. God, we thank you, Lord, as we worship, we pray you pour your spirit out tonight. We thank you for how you're speaking, Lord. Just continue to move, Lord. In Jesus' name. Watch him 
goodbye guilt, goodbye sin, goodbye pain, goodbye grave, it's a new horizon, goodbye fear, goodbye guilt, goodbye sin, goodbye Let the light on in. It's a new horizon. Let the light in. Let the light on in. It's a new horizon. Let the light in. Let the light on in. It's a new horizon. Let the light in. Let the light on. Amen. We want to thank all of you for just being able to be here tonight. But listen, maybe right now you're still contemplating, man, I should have went and prayed. Or, you know, we, I think about a scripture in James 4, 7. It says, submit to the Lord, resist the enemy, and he will flee. Amen. And tonight, maybe that's what we need to do. We maybe need to come under. You know what sub means? It means to come under something. And tonight we want to come under the authority of Jesus Christ. And to be able to resist the enemy and the lies that he's been telling us in our mind of fear, of anxiety, of worry. All these things that the enemy puts there. And it says if you resist him, those things will flee. Right? Because why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus. And so tonight that power can only be in you is if you acknowledge him. Verse 8 says, draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Amen? And so as you draw close to God, right now you have prayer warriors at each one of those banners. Don't pass it up tonight and go, man, I wish I would have went and prayed. Tonight is your night to draw near to God. It says God will draw near to you, but God is waiting for you to draw near to him. So come and let the love of Christ begin to take away all this fear, all this anxiety. Let the Holy Spirit begin to reside inside of you and begin to counsel you through the word of God that you will begin to open and be a part of. So tonight, even as you're leaving, the prayer warriors will be there. Man, but when you go down the, those stands right there, Take a left if you need prayer. Take a left if you need to go rededicate your life. And take a left if you want to accept Christ. Don't leave here the same way you came in. Adults, the, all that banners, all every one of those banners are for us adults as well. Go and let Christ dwell inside of you for the rest of your life. Amen? God desires intimacy with you but we cannot have intimacy with God unless we cry out to him to give him and surrender ourselves to him amen so tonight have that opportunity to be able to do that I'm going to ask Charlie Mills Gonzalez Church of Christ to come on up and he's going to do the benediction he's going to lead us out in prayer tonight but I, I say it again don't leave here without going out there if you need to God is waiting for you Again, just want to thank everybody for speaking tonight. Thank you for an amazing night. And I just want to encourage everybody, don't leave it here, but take it out. Romans chapter 15, verses 5 and 6 says, May God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together we may with one voice glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening just thanking you for this opportunity we've gotten to come and, and gather together, Father. We ask that you bless this community. 
we ask that you bless this school and its leaders. We ask that your glory and your grace shine. Father, we pray that your face turns towards this community and brings peace and unity and revival. We ask your help for us to take your passion with us tonight, Father, this passion that was on display with these speakers, with these athletes, Father. We ask that we can take it out. As we depart this evening, remind us, Lord, of your everlasting love and grace and mercy. I pray that we turn our eyes and keep our eyes on your son, Jesus, as we watch your plans for this community, these schools, and these athletes, Father. We ask that you, you guide them and be with this community. Father, glory be to you and our Lord and our God. We pray, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. This concludes this part of the service, so this part of the experience. If you still want to sing, we're going to sing one more song, but otherwise, feel free to uh, exit unless you want to sing some more. Guys, we're dismissed. There are some commitment cards that uh, you can submit and turn in in the boxes at the end as you're walking out. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. We sing Jesus, Jesus. Make the darkness tremble.